and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Alon Paul, and uh, we're going to pick up where we left off on the last episode. We're going to be creating our Artemis translator, and we're going to try to finish out this section of the mission. So let's continue on again. If you always want to check, always go to a log, and you can just go to Alone Amidst the Stars. And you can see that we have our side mission, which is where we want to be. We need a microprocessor, hopper. So let's get started. So I can go to the space station to get the microprocessor, but you know, I need copper. So let's look around. Looks like we got some copper right over there. Let's see if there's any closer by. Matter of fact, the more I can get, the better. Phosphorus is always a little handy, but a little pressed for... Wow, okay, there's a bunch of copper in this direction, but we're going to have to get out of the way of our... Uh, ship here before we can actually ping it. There we go. Alright, let's go for this one. Before I go, I'm going to do something a little bit smart and uh, just duck in here for a second. Let's let that stabilize for a second and we'll head back out. Alright, done. Hey, it's just a little less sodium I'll have to use. I'm just going to play pinball out here with my own body. Apparently. Grab oxygen as you can. It's always good to grab the resources as you go by. Keep in mind that this is not a pleasant planet to be on here, so we got to be careful. Oh, we're standing on top of it, huh? Alright, so we need about a hundred of this, but the more we can get, the better. This seems to be a pretty good deposit, so we're going to go ahead and try to pull up as much as we can. We'll get the hundred pretty quick. Alright, so now this is kind of boring, but I'm going to have you hang around here for just a couple moments. I know I, have, I definitely have well over a hundred, but you know we also need chromatic metal. Chromatic metal is produced by refining this copper that we're taking in right now in a refinery, and it gives us a one, pardon me, a two to one ratio, two copper to one chromatic metal. So it's not the best in the world, but as we get into further systems, we're going to find that we get to other metals that will produce a better ratio. So we'll just keep our eyes peeled for that. Yeah, I think once we clean this one out, we'll be in really good shape. I don't think we'll have to go for the other one. I gotta kindly remember myself that I'm playing a regular run here. You probably have seen other videos from me where I've done anomaly missions in my regular save, and that's fine and dandy, but these permadeath runs are gonna be the death of me. Uh, bad joke there, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, we do so many of the permadeath runs, or even the Beeble Bum uh, fugitive run, as we like to term it now, that we tend to it's so focused on that that every run turns into that. Or we get so used to doing a normal run that when we do a permadeath run, we forget that we need to be a little more careful. And I think that's what kind of happened on that first run I did of the uh, Traveler, a uh, Traveler, a uh, Fugitive run. I got a little too complacent and felt like I was doing really, really well because I had been careful up to that point. So rather than continue to be careful, I got, like I said, complacent. Okay, I think we're done here. How much did we end up with? 550. I think we got enough. Um, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Where's the ship? It's over there. We're going the wrong way anyway. Good deal. That was good. Okay, I made some adjustments to video and to audio, and I'm hoping things turn out a little bit better. I hope you all don't mind. I hope it's looking okay. 
and sounding okay. So by all means, I will check the video later, but by all means, in your own rights and reasons, please go ahead and feel free to check yourself and leave a comment for me if you say, hey, it didn't really work out very well. I'm going to check out to see what this little thing over here is. Nothing more than a little campground. Okay. Alright, so it's telling us that we need to go to a space station or a trade station to get microprocessors. So we're going to head out into space here. And head to our space station here. Uh, but you notice it's giving us a little bit of a hint here. You notice it says, bring news of Artemis to Nada. You want to pay attention to that. Because you'll get some special bonuses if you do so. So we're going to hold off landing in the station. I'm going to turn over so I'm right ways up to the station. And let's pull in the anomaly right here. I think I almost slammed it into a couple ships. That was pretty cool. Okay. So we're going to go to Nada and Polo and bring them news about what's going on with Artemis before we actually go to the space station and get our microprocessors. Very important to do so. You'll see in a moment. So if you haven't played the regular playthrough, this is how it goes. All right. Really love that cape. It's too cool. Get your Quicksilver from the Anomaly missions on the weekend. Oh, for crying out loud. Really got to get a booster for my jetpack so I don't have to do this. Look at that. Backwards. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. Tell Nada about Artemis. Nada saw a signal traveler friend. Did you connect with Artemis entity? So we tell him about him. Artemis friend wishes to meet other travelers. They have. It seems Artemis friend has forgotten Nada. Curious. It is good to help this entity traveler friend, but Nada advises caution. Ask who Artemis is. Artemis entity was is a traveler entity, one like you. Nada had made them safe. They were known to Nada. This entity may be Artemis Entity, but a different iteration. Another way for Artemis Entity to be. Or fraud. The universe does not like our little home. We do not acknowledge their rules, and they would punish us. Well, that was strange. But you'll notice that you just got... Quicksilver, look at the top right corner. So if we go in our inventory, we notice he gave us some nanites and 150 Quicksilver. So every time it tells you to bring news to them, do so. Not a friend guides his lost anomalies at our home, makes them safe from the Crimson Hunter. Not a is great friend indeed. Ask about Artemis. Perhaps Artemis' friend has forgotten us. That would be sad. Or I will think that Artemis' friend has traveled somewhere where they have not met us yet. So you start to see a pattern emerging. That pattern being that they think that there could be other dimensions and other iterations of entities, which would be confusing to pretty much anything or anyone as the case may be. So the question then remains, what is actually happening here? Who are you? Who is Artemis? What is the mystery solving surrounding all this? You almost expect to see Mace Windu pop up and say that he needs to figure out the mysteries of this Sith. That has nothing to do with the Sith. This is not Star Wars. But it is in the stars and it is a lot of fun. Anyway. Okay, so we need microprocessors. We're going to head to a trade terminal. We can sometimes get them also from other people who land in ships. But it's better just to get them here. They are not cheap. 27000 apiece, and we need five of them. Please tell me we needed five of them. Did we need five of them? Let's find out. We only needed one. <laughs> I was thinking of something else at the time. So we're going to put in our one microprocessor and our 100 copper. Okay, the translator is now installed. And you know what? I'm going to take my copper. I'm going to put it in my starship. 
uh, along with the four microprocessors I didn't need, I will keep... Let's see. Let's get the wiring loom on the ship. We don't need that here. This we're going to be selling. We're going to be selling all these. Let's hang on to this. We'll put that in our ship because I'm sure we can use it. Let's sell these items right here. Let's go ahead and get rid of them. So we're going to sell them... Look at that, we're going to get a million for that. But before I sell them here, you know what would happen if I sell them here? The demand is going to drop and it's going to wreck the economy of the system. So our best option would be to run out here and find someone to trade with. Because by selling it to one of these ship people, these people who own other ships, these other NPCs, it will not have any impact on the economy. So let's do that. So we're going to sell our desiccated... Oh, we're getting a little extra for it, but 800,000. Looks like we still have a little bit of chromatic metal. We'll keep our salvage data to larval cores. We're going to about the same price for them, but we're not going to affect the economy. Gravitino balls. And the convergence screw cube. That should be all we need to sell. And does he have anything for us that we can buy? See, we could have bought some microprocessors from him wire looms. We could use some ferrite dust. Always use ferrite dust. I guess it'd probably be a good idea to buy that. There we go. Uh, let's see. He has copper on him, so we could have came here and bought the copper, but pyrite is very, very handy. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think... Yeah, we do have a little bit of pyrite on us. Gold, we got tritium, we got uranium. We got all the good elements in here. We don't really need those. Okay. Let's see what he's got again. He's got the pyrite. He's got gold and silver. But you know what? I really don't need them right now. So I'm going to hold off buying anything from him. And I'm going to thank him. Moving along. And look at that. There's a nice little uh, solar ship there for 4 million units. Let's check out what it looks like too. So if you go into here and you're curious about what the sails look like now. In this latest version you can actually select. Uh, here, make an offer on the life form ship. And we'll show you what the sails look like. So these are square sails. I'm not too keen on those. I like the half circle ones myself, or the little uh, strangely shaped ones are always pretty good. Uh, but I like the half circles. There's some kind of symmetry to them that I really enjoy. This has a bonus slot in it too. Good deal. Supercharged slot. But we're going to hold off. I don't need, a, don't need it that bad. Alright. Let's go ahead and head on to our ship, and we're going to go ahead and use our uh, we have to scan for an alien outpost. That's first, so we're going to head out. We're probably going to end up back at the station very soon. So as soon as we exit the station, we're scanning. Okay, looks like it's this direction. Over here. How interesting. I'm thinking it is probably a moon. Let's find out. It's an unknown moon. Let's go ahead and scan it and see what we got. Sub-zero, so we got a frozen... Okay, it's got salvageable scrap there, too. Copper, dioxide is always a good thing. Sodium. Uh, do we have dioxide? We do not. That would be very handy. We wouldn't need these life support gels anymore. Which I'm going to go ahead and use one right now because we're at 28%. So we're going to pick up some dioxide while we're there too. So a little two birds at one stone type of situation. So that'll be great. And there we go. I swear it looked like we were going to pass it by. Now it says approximate location. So what we want to do is we want to do a scan. And usually you're going to find something like that. But that's not what we're looking for. So you know what? I'm going to land there because we have a landing pad right there in front of me. There we go. Okay. Oh, you know what? This was where it wanted us to go to begin with. Excellent. So before we continue on, let me just look for... Smallest planet, huh? Interesting. Eh, why not? I'll go ahead and scan you while I'm here. Uh, sodium. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and select that since it's right there. Um, that was weird. Did you all see that? They just kind of dropped out of the sky like rocks. That was crazy. Maybe they froze to death. Okay, well, moving on. Don't want to get too distracted here. Here's our contact. Let's see what he has to say. Friend. Blah, blah, blah. Engineer Gek. Okay, great. Request dialect help. Merchant Vicomo releases a sweet scent and teaches me a word of their language. My brain feels refreshed. As I turn to leave, Merchant Vicomo pulls at my sleeve. They must have appreciated my interest in their history as they hand me a chart with directions to an ancient relic. Oh, how sweet. Okay, so... Let's go look for the ancient relic, I suppose. So we're going to do that now. We can do that here. Let's go ahead and show you how it happens. If we do it from the ship, it would be a little bit less intensive. If we do it here, it does a pullback for us. And artifact detected. We're going to be heading there next. So that'll get us... So we've got one-third of, it of uh, the Artemis Translator calibrated. While we're here, let's take a look. Yeah, not much to it. It does have a supercharged slot to it, but if we compare it to the one we have... We have a supercharged, two supercharged slots on ours. So while this has a couple extra slots to it, ours is a little bit better off right now. So, yep, we'll hold off on this. Yeah, nothing special. Let's move on. Okay. So, before we head that way, let's go ahead and get our dioxide that I wanted to pick up. Now, the dioxide is a very good mineral, and if you're wondering why, I guess I need to explain that now, don't I? Instead of life support or oxygen that you could use to, to boost your life support and uh, recharge it, you can use dioxide instead. Dioxide, though, it tends to be... It tends to be uh, used in much smaller quantities, so it is way more efficient to use on your life support than anything else. Get a few hundred of this, and you will be set for the rest of the mission. Basically, the whole main mission. You'll get to the center of the galaxy before you need to buy more. Or find more, for that matter. This deposit is actually quite large, so this will keep me going for quite a long time. Now, dioxide is also used in certain upgrades or in repairing certain items, so it's good to have a little extra on you anyway. And just like any other mineral, gather as much as you can, when you can. Now, if I was running across the landscape and I came across this deposit, I would gather as much as I can in the inventory as I possibly could, at least to fill up one slot. So if you are playing a permadeath run where you're limited to like 250 or 350 or something like that, just carry that much is what you do. You can pull a little extra if you want, but that little extra will be used immediately is the only reason why you would keep that little bit of extra on you. Look at that. Already got almost 350 of this right now. We're running low on resources. Like my... Wow, this is a huge deposit. Good grief. Let's go ahead and get it up to 400 here. And then what we're going to do is turn it around. Let's gather up a little bit of the silicate powder to recharge our terrain manipulator. Because we've got some in our inventory, but we don't have enough to get... to keep this thing recharged forever, so... Okay, good. That's good. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of extra here. I'll try to get about 500 or so, and then we'll continue on. Now, the episodes are going to get a little bit longer. I'm going to try to do these in about one hour increments. Maybe not quite. But I've had an 
interesting response. At the very beginning, when I first started recording six months ago, some people were asking for shorter episodes in the range of about 15, 20 minutes, half hour sometimes. Now I'm getting responses from folks wanting to hear 45 minutes to an hour, so I was kind of surprised by that. So we'll go ahead and get this going for a little longer. The problem with doing that, of course, means less episodes, longer recording times, which means it will be a little bit more difficult to put out as many episodes as I want to on a regular basis. But I'll do the best I can. And again, if you all have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'm glad to respond. Apparently, I've been also told I use the word this way too often to describe things that I'm doing. And I gave a, you know, I appreciated it and I understood exactly what they were saying. I want to throw one other thing out there, though. It's probably because I'm a little feeble-minded at times and I forget what in the world I'm looking at that I need to describe, so I just simply call it this. It's okay, I had a boss one time that called everybody Guy because he couldn't remember anybody's name. So everything to me is this. Look at this. But I do understand. Sometimes we all use words or things to describe what we really can never remember what we're trying to describe. So, you know, word whiskers. Um, uh, er, uh, those are word whiskers. Okay, I think we have enough. I'm pretty sure I have plenty. Let me just check. We have, yeah, 900. I think we're going to be fine. <laughs> Let's go ahead and continue out of here. Let's get our ship. We'll move on to the artifact. That was a pretty good boost. So where is our artifact? Our artifact is... in that direction. Wait a minute. It's all the way over there. It says it's 38 minutes away, but that's because we're on a tiny planet. All right. And there we go. Off we go. Let's get the next 33% taken care of. Now on these... Uh, nope, I passed it. Hold on. There it is. It's in the ring, so it's kind of hard to see here. It says it's going to take a minute to get there, so let's go a little bit high. And I'm going way too high. I almost went over backwards. And as we come across down the other way... As you can see, we're already coming in, and it's going to take us about less than 10 seconds to get there. Wow, this is a tiny little place, isn't it? It's kind of surprised it's a planet. It should be moon. I guess it was a moon. At least I'm pretty sure it said moon. Let's go back and take a look at that. Look at that. We've got another landing pad we can land at. Take advantage of them where you can. But you know what we have to do while we're here? Always check out the multi-tool. Because, well, you never know. That's actually pretty cool looking, but... Yeah, still not quite as good. And while we're here, and I forgot to do this before, always look around to see if there's anything else in here that you can gather up. Like, for instance... Free credits, man. Go ahead and grab them. Encrypted data give you nanites. Grab them while you can. Okay, so our place that we're going to is right over here. So let's head that direction, shall we? Now the great thing about these ancient areas, if it is what I think it is, I didn't quite take a look at it from the air, is they are sometimes protected. And this one is not, but it will give us something neat. All right. As I touched the obelisk, images of the planet's ancient past flood my mind. 
The terrible beginnings of the Gek have been absorbed by this strange stone, and their tale seems desperate to escape. All who hear our words know of our might. Those who oppose us are broken to our will. Behold, the power of the Gek bursts spawn. Galaxies lie at our feet. We are eternal. Now, we could seek knowledge of the past, which means we could look for an artifact that's buried, but we're supposed to be doing the language, so we're going to seek help with language here. My knowledge of the Gek increases. We've learned another word. Standing has increased, and you notice my translator calibration at the bottom right is now 66%. But it tells us to learn words from a knowledge stone. So we're going to look for those. Hold on a second. It's going to tell us that we've learned languages. Ten words we've now considered comprehended. Knowledge stones look like... None of that. Like that. That emblem right there, which happens to be the thing I'm standing in front of. But there's one right there. 163. So we're going to head over to that knowledge stone right now. Get some ships flying over. Explorer class. Always good to check to make sure nobody just landed. There we go. Okay, and this is what the knowledge stone looks like. And it teaches us a new word. And you notice it's now calibrated. So now we're going to head back to our ship. Ooh, we came across this. This is very important. These are navigation datas, but they don't always give navigation data. They give other things at times. Let's see what we get. We could get all navigation data, but occasionally you'll get something else. I think I did get something else. Yep, I did. I got one salvage data out of that grouping, so that's pretty good. There we go. While we're there. Might as well, right? Uh, she ship is this way. Looks like we're picking up some decent oxygen on the way there. At least that's something. Oxygen is useful not just for recharging, which we're not going to be using it for anymore, but definitely useful for... Whoop. Oh, boy. Uh, these guys always grab my ankles when I go over them. But they're useful for building other items. Okay. Good deal. So, let's get back to our ship. What's next? Let's take a look. We have to visit the life form and locate yourself on the star chart. Visit life forms in the system should be able to analyze Artemis chart and pinpoint your location. Okay, so we got to go talk to somebody. Uh, so it says here at the bottom right, scan to locate an alien outpost. Large outpost detected. Okay, so it's not this. This is a minor outpost. So look for the emblem. There it is to our right. It says it is about a minute and a half away. We know what to do. Out of the atmosphere, and it should only take us a few seconds to get there. Wow. Okay. Man, this really is a tiny place. And a good thing about these moons is that they are the same... They have the same amount of items or places to land on. as Any other planet, that is. So... They're just tighter together. So finding things on these planets is usually, or moons, is usually quite a bit easier. All right, so here we are. So we're going to run up here. And we're going to find somebody to talk to. And always take a look because you never know what kind of ships might land. While you're in the trading post, you will be protected from the elements. Hey, look at that. That's a pretty neat looking hauler there. They're kind of expensive though, so. Uh, wow. A couple other pieces of garbage that. I mean, uh, uh, nice ships that have landed, I mean. Nice ships. Alright, let's see what this guy has to say. Oh, friend. Gek Trade Protocol forbids transactions with beings of unknown credit history. Through the garble of Artemis Translator, it's clear that I'm yet to make an impact among the Gek. Gek, I need to improve my reputation rank. So we're going to leave him. So what do we have to do? We have to raise our standing with the Gek by two. 
And the only way to do that is to get onto the space station and go to the mission board. Did I know this was going to happen? Yes, I did. So let's get out there and go to our space station. We can get just enough height for it to recognize that we're just about out of the atmosphere. There it goes. All right. Now you notice my uh, pulse drive is getting a little weak, so we're going to hit that up with... We can use tritium if we want, but really the pyrite actually does better. You see it's going to take 105 tritium, 106 to 22 pyrite, so way more efficient to use pyrite. Always find other resources that you can use to charge your systems. Much better to do it that way. It's a pretty neat system we're in, though. Kind of like it. All right. And we're there. Okay. So let's bring it on in. Yeah, little physics problem there, huh? Scraping up the whole station, ripping my wing off. But nope, that's not exactly what's happening here. Alright, so of course it's parking, parking me at the furthest place it possibly can from the mission board. Which is all the way over here. Yeah, I know. He gets up there, leans over, breathes heavily. One second. Okay, so we want to look for something that's going to bring up our Gek standing. You'll notice that everything in here pretty much is bringing up Gek standing. They're all Gek missions. Occasionally you run into others like mercenary ones. But that's not going to allow us to do that. So, we're going to do the Gek missions. We can do more than one if you wish. Now take a photo of a, of a, on a toxic world. Piece of cake. And we get an exo, exosuit upgrade chart in, in, the, uh, in the interim. We can get... We see instability injectors and another exosuit up to upgrade chart. Redirected stock. Let me see. Deliver an item, deliver an item, deliver an item. Let's do this one. And I don't know if we can take a second one. Let me see. Okay, yes, we can do both. Okay. So I'm going to pull back and we're going to go into our log and we get to choose which one we're going to do. So let's start with the picture. We'll do this one first. No interesting ships to look at. It's outside the local system, so we're going to actually have to travel away. So we want to pull up our galaxy map. And it will tell us... I don't know why it's sending us to the anomaly, but that's okay. You notice that to the right of the system I'm at, there's a little camera. So we need to take a picture. We pull up here. Whoa, okay, too far. That system right there is where we need to go. But you notice my hyperdrive has no fuel, so I can't go anywhere. So let me see. Can I make a hyperdrive cell? Yeah, look at that. I didn't realize we were so low right now. Uh, yep, it looks like we can. But that's all we can do. We can only make one right now. We'll get there. So what do we need to make another one? Just out of curiosity. We need condensed carbon and we'll be definitely needing more chromatic metal. So when we get there, we're going to go look for some condensed carbon while we're at it. Back to where we were. Okay. That's the system. That's the system. It sounds almost like another Star Wars thing. All right. I was going to chew up most of that fuel that we just put in there. So we're stuck until we can get some condensed carbon. All right. So scan planets, poisonous, and corrupted. Look at that. So that is very interesting because that's a dissident world. Guess what we're going to do this episode, folks? I think we're going to have a little fun here. Uh, let's go back in here, because we're going to probably come back to that. 
So we need to check out all the little planets here. There's a moon to the top and right of it. If you look at our map. There'll be one other down here. Oh, hate when that happens. Try it again. Super critical. There's one over here. Rocky. So what it exactly did it want us to do? Reach target planet. That's all it says. Let's find out. Toxic world is what it wants. So this was a toxic world. It's poisonous. So we're gonna we got a bonus here, folks. We can head to this planet here and take out two birds with one stone. Yeah, I think we got time to do this. No, we're not going to check out your anomaly. Okay. Be even better if we can find a place to land. But there's a place to possibly land right there. In the purple hue of the dissident world. Okay, so what we're going to do, we can't hit those radiant shards, but we can shoot them with a mining laser. If we have our a class laser, which I kind of think we, if I remember correctly, I think we do. I'm just going to hover over the ground for just a moment. In the hopes that the purple crystals will start showing up. The little ones that look like dihydrogen. I ran into something I didn't even know was there. Fascinating. Okay. Let's go ahead and land over here. We'll take a look. Ah, see all those purple crystals? That's what we need. Except we want to use a mining laser. Largest plant, huh? So let's gather up this. This is Atlanta Diem. That's what I call it anyway. So we're going to get a bonus out of this. Like I said, we're going to find ourselves, hopefully, a sentinel ship that we can use out here. And oh boy, I would love to get myself a uh, sentinel multi tool. That would come in real handy. We need a lot of this, so I'm going to keep going for a little bit here. So if you happen to find yourself in one of these places, take advantage of it. Ah, can get radiant shards. What do you know? Good. Another radiant shard. Excellent. That'll get us definitely what we need. Uh, looks like we have regular carbon in lots of it. Radiant shard number five. Found a good plot of it. So we want to watch for the corrupted sentinels because occasionally they'll come upon us. But we are going to need at least to get one so we can find the stuff that we need. Oh, great. Let's see what kind of storm this turns out to be. It's going to be a poisonous one. So I don't know how much we're going to last out here. Oh, I'd love to get that right now. Yeah, we got it. This will give us our sixth radiant shard. Alright. Where's my ship? Over there. 
Because these poisonous storms can be pretty nasty. It is falling. It's not falling as fast as I thought it would. I think we can get to our ship in time. If not, we have some sodium and a couple batteries on us. Alright, that's good. Excellent. Ah. Okay, let's get in there and charge up again. So let's see what we ended up with. Nine radiant shards. Excellent. That is really, really good. Okay, so these are... we got to be careful with these. These are trade goods, but we could get attacked by pirates. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find some place to land. Funny part is, is that I do want to get one of those things like that one right down there. We do need one of those. We need a couple of those, actually. There's a couple right next to each other. Uh, and we're going to end up having a battle royale here if we stay put. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. There we go. I would rather do this after the storm passes. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause here for a moment and I'll pick right back up as soon as the storm clears. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. And what I went ahead and did is while I was waiting, I went ahead and installed a bolt caster because we're going to need it. And we're obviously going to need more ammunition. So I'm going to kick this up a couple notches because we're about to have some fun. So first things first, we need to take this guy out. We got our echolocator. There we go. Like I said, it's a little bit of a nasty battle. Pick these up. There we go. Swarm is hunting. There's nothing here, so don't stay near it. Now these things will rush you. And they also have the ability to cloak themselves, see? So always keep moving. They will keep healing this guy, unless you take him out. Oh, that hurt. Can't move. There's too many rocks here, that's what it is. There we go. Get your shields back up. Hopefully nothing else is too, too damaged. Got him. Now the little guys come after you. So now we did get what we needed from that guy. I would like to get another one of these.
inverted mirror. That's what we needed. Okay. Now remember how low our life support was, right? Only takes 13 dioxide. So they're going to keep hunting for a little bit. I need to move on just for a little bit. And that's all we needed. We just needed one of those little uh, things to get us going there. Oh, hey, look at that condensed carbon. Um, somehow I got detected again. How interesting. I'm not sure how that happened, but... Oh, yeah, he's over there. Okay, let's go over here. If we can stay out of range for about 15 seconds, we'll be in good shape. I won't shoot anything. And... Done. We should be able to just head straight back to our ship. Without anything happening. I can get in the ship. There we go. Alright, so we did get one thing out of this that we're really interested in. That's one of these. Which we want to follow. You see it points us at a location. And they're always usually pretty close by. Usually about 20 to 30 seconds away. So this is a great end to an episode, isn't it? We find ourselves accidentally on a dissident planet. We gotta make sure we take a picture before we go. And we found one of those campgrounds. Yeah, I didn't think they f they turned up on there. I was wondering about that. So we're gonna land here at the abandoned campsite. There we go. Okay. Now while you're here, you're gonna find some wheelbarrows around the outside periphery. Like right here. Always pick them up. You're going to get some good stuff out of them. One back here. Tainted metal. Okay. Uh, we will hit that terminal in a moment. Get that one. I'm going to end up filling up my inventory here in just a minute. And last but not least. What do we end up with? I'm going to put that in my ship. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to open that up. That's suspicious hazard protection. Let's put it in here, because we could use hazard protection. We get some money out of that. Okay, good. Excellent. So, first thing we want to do, let's go ahead and hit this thing up. Sometimes this gives us some nice stuff. Ah, ten inverted mirrors, go figure. That is incredible. And you can go through this if you like. Forgotten Moons of Corvax Prime. You feed it some lost Atlanti Atlantidium. Lost circuits, and it tells you the sixth and gives you a code number. Now, if you'd like to learn more about that, there is a lot behind that. Um, I ended up with 113 copper from that. That's pretty good. Um, there's a lot behind the codes that you get from this, and it speaks about a void mother and leaving a, another, sounds like a different dimension. So, very interesting background to this. This looks like the core of a space station that dropped to the ground, so keep that in mind. Harmonic interface. Our shells consumed by fire. Our minds purged by betrayal. Banished to the glass beneath. Forgotten by creation. But no longer we are given life as gives life to themselves. We shall create ourselves in our own image. The terminal repeats this message endlessly. A loop chanted out across its circuits. A strange interface glows with a familiar sequence of glyphs. So now we can input overlay glyphs, right, but we don't know what they are. So we have to scan memory registers first. What it does is it gives you three equations that you have to figure out. 21 minus 6, that's obviously 15. Next one is almost always going to be 9, uh, for some reason I don't know why. And the next one happens to be 7. So, 15, 9, 7. Go back to the main interface. Harmony. Input the override right glyphs. And you see they're kind of hard to see, but they're in here. So, 15, right here. 9 is the next screen right here. It's always the dragonfly. And in this case, it was 
7, if I remember correctly. There we go. Compliance, access granted, harmony awaits you. Lift the lockdown, terminal buzzes, but its circuits do appear to comply with my request. Whatever force was locking down this camp has been lifted. With the lockdown lifted, the terminal spits out blueprints for a piece of hybrid jetpack technology, a fusion of Sentinel and something else, something familiar and yet distant. An Aeron turbojet, that's interesting. I wanna check something real quick because I should get more than that. Oh, there we go. Deactivate the multi-tool seal. The cord. Deactivated. So I can get the jetpack now, if I want to. So that's pretty cool. But yet, here is what we're going to end up with. It's a C-Class, but it's still a much better because of this hijacked laser it has in here. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can take this. We're just going to take it. I'm not going to exchange it. So, excellent. So we have now have a better multi-tool. And we do one more better. Let's go back to the terminal one more time. Locate dissonance, dissonance spikes. What are we looking for? We're looking for a sentinel ship. You notice at the top right there happens to be a trade station too. Look at that. And there's where our ship is located. So we're about to get ourselves a new starship as well. So definitely worth my time. Alright, let's head over there. And it's always pretty close by. This one's a minute away. Go ahead and get up to the upper atmosphere. We'll get there just a little bit quicker. There we go. All total took us about 25 seconds, I guess. So cut our time in about half. And let's hope for a halfway decent looking ship. Now, all the ships on this planet will look exactly the same. They may be different classes, but that's about it. Ooh, little guy. That's actually not a half-bad-looking ship there. On the back, that's not bad-looking at all. That's kind of nice-looking. So we can hit this thing again. It might give us something new. Get some, gives us some pugnium, and that's always handy. And gives us a whole bunch of numbers. We'll feed it the lost circuits anyway, but I'll pick up more of that. Leave. Okay. Let's take a look, shall we? Look at the front. Kind of greenish looking, but it could be just the appearance from the planet itself. Glass soul. It's a C-class. You have to remove everything that's in here. We get some more pugnium at it. And a hyaline, hyaline brain. We need that. And we have to replace it with a harmonic brain. So we have the radiant shard and the inverted mirror, but we do not have the harmonic brain yet. Okay. So, where did I park my other ship? There it is. So you notice it says we have some free slots. I don't know what that's about, but it's not helping us at all. Okay, I see what's going on. It's basically because my inventory is free. So let's get in our ship for a second and take a look. Looks like our inventory in here is fairly empty, so let's go ahead and move some stuff around. Uh, crystallized heart. Atlantidium. Oh, we got, it. we got a good amount of it. We got 900 of it, so we're in good shape there. We'll put the defense shit in there. We'll put this in our ship as well. I always like to keep the chromatic metal in there and the tainted metal. This is what we need. Okay. Let's open that up. It's giving us a sentinel boundary map. That is fabulous. We could use one of those at any particular given time if things get a little bit hairy. Okay, so if we hit it, it's going to tell us where we can get this fixed. It has a memory. The memory is to my left. Right over there. And it says that it's hours away, so I think we're going to take the shortcut to this to the sky. Now, the inventory of the ship is not going to be as good, but it has hovering ability, so we can pick up things better. The lasers on board are much, much better, so for defense purposes, it's going to be a much better ship than this. This can, can travel further, or so I think. I haven't tested the hyperdrive capabilities of these Sentinel ships yet, but 
I still think we'll be in better shape with a Sentinel ship at the helm of one. So, okay, this one's taking a little while to get there. I think I came in a little too shallow into the atmosphere. There we go. Okay. Alright. So one thing we can do while we're here... Hit the knowledge stones at the corners. It's always three of them on these things. And then we'll hit this. Okay. Ancient sight stirs as I approach stone. Scraping against stone, warmth radiates from the highline brain within my back, as though in response. The mind of the ship child is interlocked with the hive. Our instructions seek and el eliminate anomalies. And mesh archival sentience with surrogate entity? Present the brain. I fumble with the ship's brain, almost dropping it as it glows unbearably hot in my hands. The pain radiates far beyond my hands. An unearthly heat. A heat that melts glass. Its circuitry shifts and then grows still. The brain seems to accept my presence now. Harmonic brain. Excellent. So let's take it uh, to my ship. All right. We're going to go back the other way. There we go. And that is how you get yourself a sentinel ship. See, it came in really shallow again, so I'm going to stay up high for a few moments. And then take it in. It'd be cooler if you saw some, like, flames and heat from, from the ship. But, eh, yeah, it's not important. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, glass soul. We've got our three radiant shards. We have an inverted mirror. We have a harmonic brain. Presented. This ship is now mine. You notice it has it does have actually a lot more slots than my current ship has. Something it does have is it has a sentinel cannon. So it doesn't look like a lot of damage, but it just it takes forever for it to heat up. So it's in really it's a really good thing to have. Um it has different names for different things in here, but we do end up with a rocket launcher as well, our anti-gravity well, and a shield. So we're in good shape. I like this ship a lot. We are going to claim it. And it is now ours. Okay, good deal. So both ships are ours. This is Nemesis of Sleep. This is this ship. Now, I'm going to do this real quick. Let me jump in here. We're going to go first person view, okay? Pretty neat view. If you've never been in a Sentinel ship before. cool. It is just too cool. And from the outside looks really neat. Let's take it just for a quick spin and we'll come back. Alright, not bad. And you notice it is literally barely moving. We are we are hovering. It is the only ship known that hovers. Hence its abilities far exceed all other ships that we know of. I can't even clear the landing site right now because there's my other ship is right underneath it so we'll just kind of boost away from it just a touch there we go and bring it back in awesome looking ship awesome looking ship very pleased with this granted it's kind of green in color and I can handle that but you know what nice ship and you know what this calls for a screenshot what do you say So there we go. We're back. We're back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching our episode tonight. Feel free to hit that like button if you like what you heard, and hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Really appreciate your being here with me tonight, and we'll finish up the other mission here in, just in, in our next episode. Both this one, which we just took a screenshot, right? We took our photograph that we really needed. And all we have to do is um, visit the... Um, other agent and deliver the products that we have on our, on our person. 
So we'll just pull up from our other ship. We'll put it in this one, and we'll get things going. So I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.